on the cross, hallelujah, 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 Lord Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Lord Holy Spirit, we breathe in your, ooh, your wonderfulness. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being in us and working through us. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Our Father, we give you great thanks for to you are the glory and the honor and the greatness and the majesty and the victory. All these belong to you, Lord. And we lift up your name today for you are our mighty God. You are our awesome Father. And Jesus is our Prince of Peace. And the Holy Spirit is the one who puts up with us and guides us and teaches us how to walk with you. Father, we thank you for all those who are with us this morning in person and virtually. Father, we thank you that you are bringing all those who are still on the way safely. Father, we thank you that this is the day that you have made and we are determined that we will rejoice with you. We will be glad in you for you have filled us with your spirit and you have filled us with the wonder of your glory and your majesty. And Lord, we bow before you and we give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. And we give you great thanks. We give you great thanks. Great thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Jehovah God, you Come on, say. reign. You, you have silenced the voice of the enemy. You have given us the victory. So we lift up, so we lift up our voices and give you praise. Jehovah God, you, you have silenced. You have silenced the voice of the enemy. Yeah, yeah. You have given us the victory. Oh. So we lift up our voices and give you praise. Jehovah God, you, you pray. You have silenced it. You have silenced the voice of the enemy. You have given us the victory. So we lift up our voices and give you praise. You have silenced the voice. You have silenced. We have the victory. 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 We have the vict
Jesus because when we close our eyes then we see Jesus so I want you to close your eyes and look at Jesus are you seeing him he is laying his hand upon your forehead and he's blessing you and that's how Jesus reigns that's why he's reigning here now and that's how he gives you the victory because he's blessing you right now he's standing before you and he's laying his hand upon you because he doesn't have covid so he can lay his hand upon you and he's blessing you he's blessing you he's blessing you in your spirit he's causing your spirit to rise up in you and to take dominance and to find him and to bless him today and then he's blessing you in your soul so that all the things that are tumbling around inside you can be at peace because he's the prince of peace he's blessing your soul mm, yes lord we thank you for your blessing in our soul and then he's blessing your body you know all the quirks and things that ache and creak and 
do all kinds of things that he did not design our bodies to do. He's blessing you this morning in your body. Father, we receive your blessing. Lord Jesus, we receive your blessing. Lord Jesus, we thank you that because you were wounded for us, your blessing of healing is coming into our bodies this morning. Jesus is reigning here. Lord, we receive your blessing of healing in our bodies, of strength to go forward. And Lord, we thank you that you are also blessing us in our purpose and in our way and in our path of righteousness. Yes, Lord. In our path of righteousness. Yes, Lord. In our path of righteousness, Lord. Jesus is in every part of your being and let the blessing of the Lord reach deep inside you and bless you. Let the blessing of the Lord reach deep inside you and bless you. Lord, we thank you that Jesus is reigning in every part of our life. Lord, we release every part of our life so that you can reign in us. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is reigning here. Yes. Jesus is reigning here. Oh, yes. Jesus is reigning here. Jesus is reigning
Father, we thank you. You have told us that in everything we must give thanks. And so we give you thanks, Lord. Lord Holy Ghost, we give you thanks. You are with us. You have rained upon us. Your breath has blown through us and refreshed us. And we give you great and mighty thanks this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. Well, you know, after such wonderful worship, we have to have something really powerful that goes with that. So our sister, Minister Deborah Jabati Samuel, is going to come and fire us up this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning, church. Oh, the Lord has sent me this morning to tell you. This is the Lord speaking this morning. The Lord says, I am the Lord. I am he. He could have The Lord says, I am the Lord. I am he. I have care and concern and compassion for you. Hey, 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 in this house this morning. The Lord says, I have care and concern and compassion. I am sensitive to your situation. The Lord this morning says, I am the Lord, I am he. I have care, concern, and compassion. I am sensitive to your situation. Could somebody say amen? This morning, church, the Lord is sensitive to your situation. Oh, I give thanks this morning because uh, he is the Christ. I say you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The Lord this morning is sensitive to you. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Oh, we thank God this morning. Psalm 91, 11 to 12 says, for he will command his angels concerning you. Hmm? To guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands. So that you will not strike your foot against us too. Oh God, that is God to have. Oh glory this morning. He will command his angels concerning you. Just this morning you are so important to God. He has so much compassion, so much care. He is sensitive to your situation. Cast all your care on him because he cares for you. Imagine he will command his angels concerning you. He goes into the realm of the angelic because of you. Because of you. He knows you by name and he say, Angel, you go and attend to that situation. Angel, you go and attend to that situation. Angel, you're on assignment now. You go and attend to that situation. And he is commanding his angels concerning you. To guard you in all your ways. He could have said that. To guard you in all your ways. And it says the angels are going to lift you up in their hands. My God, this morning, the angels are lifting you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against us too. The Lord is concerned. He is sensitive to your situation. Isaiah 63, 9 says, in all their distress, he too was distressed. However your situation is this morning, the Lord there with you. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. This morning, the angels are on assignment to your situation. The Lord himself is working with you. However you are this morning, whatever concerns you, God is concerned about that. 
Wherever you are going, God is concerned about that. However you are feeling, God is concerned about that. And he's not just concerned, he is sensitive. You know, there's a difference. You know, sometimes you have, uh, you, you, you're working with people or you're working with children. And if you are sensitive, you will detect something is going on. Oh, that's how God is with us. God is sensitive to our situation. And the Lord is sensitive to you to respond, to restore, to rescue, to reside with you, to reshape you, to make restitution for you. Notice everything there is R-E-S, 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 R-E-S. I'm going again, R-E-S with me. This is the Lord talking this morning. The Lord says he is sensitive to you to respond, to restore to rescue, to reside with you, to reshape you, to make restitution for you. He R-E-S you, R-E-S-T. He give you rest in him this morning. To respond, to answer prayer, to touch, to provide your need, to provide guidance, to respond. You're praying this morning, this morning the Lord is talking. The Lord is saying, I will answer your prayer. The Lord is responding to say, I will touch you where you have need. This morning, the Lord is sensitive to you to restore, to restore health in your body. If you need healing this morning, just stretch up your hand. Stretch up your hand, my hand high up too. The Lord is sensitive to your situation to provide healing, to restore health this morning. Oh, Jehovah Rapha. He's a healer. I am the Lord that healed thee. I am he. The Lord is healing you this morning. To restore health. To restore peace. The next area is to rescue. To deliver you. To provide protection for you. To calm the storm you are in. To rescue, to reside with you, for us to be in his presence, to, uh, to abide, it, it, it will be our abode. To reside with you, you know, just to, to reside with the man Christ Jesus. You know, the living condition is so much improved. If you don't know him today, let me tell you, his name is Jesus. He's the best man you will ever know. Mm -hmm. To make rest, to reside with you to reshape you oh this morning we in the potter's house and he could reshape us we are clear and we at his touch rejoice because if he's reshaping us it is for good it means the vessel is going to be used in a mighty way to make restitution recover what has been taken yeah, Jesus to restore peace. So the Lord says, I am the Lord. I am he. I have care, concern, and compassion. I am sensitive to your situation. Isaiah 49, 10 says, they will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. You ready for that, church? Hey, you better be ready because the Lord was ready a long time. Isaiah 54 says, says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. The Lord is sensitive to your situation. Your situation of illness, he's Jehovah Rapha. Blood of Jesus applied. Your situation in business, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nisi. Your situation in weakness, it is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. Daniel 10, 19 says, do not be afraid. You are highly esteemed. Peace, be strong now. Be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and I said, speak, Lord, since you have given me strength. Hallelujah. 
He's in your situation of loneliness. He says, I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Genesis 28, 15. He's in your situation of sadness. He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones, with shouts of joy. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tent of the righteous of the Lord. So he's in our situation in, notice now with N in Ness, his illness, his business, his weakness, his loneliness, his sadness. You have to nest with me. <laughs> Rest with me and nest with me because the Lord is mighty. In your illness, he's Jehovah Rapha. In your business, he's Jehovah Jireh. In your weakness, in your loneliness or your sadness. God is mighty to deliver. Turn with me this morning to Luke chapter 5. The Lord says, I am the Lord. I am he, my God. I am sensitive to your situation. And when you see God get sensitive to our situation... Miracles and mighty things start to happen. Imagine God is sending his angels to lift us up in his arms and carry and protect us. Angels are saying, not mortals. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus, we're glad for the mortals too. But we feel so honored to know angels are commanded in our situation. Luke 5, chapter 1 to 11, I read, One day, Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon said, Master, we've worked hard all night, and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he said, Lord, stay far from me. This is trouble here now. He said, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, I will make you fishers of men. And they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. Church, this morning the Lord is saying, I am the Lord, I am he. And with me is awesome victory. Awesome victory, not normal victory. Things that will bewilder, and the word here is astonish. So one day Jesus was standing by the lake, people crowding around him, listening to the word of God. And he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were watching their nets. Listen, God seeing the situation and sensitive to the situation in what we could miss. What did he see? He see two boats. And he saw fishermen washing nets. But God already understand what's going on. Let me tell you. God already understand what's going on. However you are presented, God already understand what is going on. The fishermen had not said a word. We are not told that their faces were downcast with sorrow. We are told that Jesus saw at the water's edge two boats. Left there by the fishermen, and the fishermen washing their net. What about that is significant? Not to us, but God is sensitive to the situation. And what did he do? Jesus got into one of the boats. Let me tell you, Jesus is going to get into right where you never need. Jesus gets right into the boat. Jesus is going to get into where you have your need. Jesus got into the boat, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put the boat out from shore. Sat down and taught the people from the boat. God already knows what he's doing, you know. He ain't tell them yet. Let me tell you, church, God already know what he's doing, even if he ain't tell you yet. 
and God assessed the situation, and Jesus is sensitive to your situation. So Jesus, look at that. Two boats, fishermen washing net. Jesus said, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going across there and sorting that out for them fellas. Yes? Jesus see you, he said, uh-huh. I see what's going on here. I'm sorting that out for you. Jesus said, uh-huh. 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 How that child lead up there? Aha. Uh -huh. They say, aha. Uh -huh. I see what's going on there. I'm sorting that out for you. He said, aha. Uh -huh. You sit down there. I've seen everything concerning you. I'm, so, I'm sorting that out for you. Jesus watched that there. You sit down there normal in black and white like all. Oh, you have some kind of zebra connection. And he don't say, aha. Uh -huh. I see what's going on there. And I'm sorting that out for you. Uh-huh. I see what's going on there. All you're smiling behind the mask. But I'm sorting that out for you. Jesus. Jesus. Je I see what's going on there. And I'm sorting that out for you. He can say He can say Sometimes you have to talk it. Jesus don't see it. Two boats on the shore and fisherman washing net. And Jesus went and sat down right in one of the boats. I right here with you. I right here with you. He says, I am the Lord. I am He. I have compassion for you. And then He sat down. He sat to teach the people from the boat. Jesus ain't gonna miss a mistake to preach the word. But he have another agenda. Hear him. Simon, put out into the deep water and let down those nets for a catch. Simon really wanted to say something else. But he didn't. Simon wants to say, now, where you come out with that? You know anything about fishing here? Will you come with that? All night we experienced fishermen. Been fishing. You come now with instructions. Contrary. Who does go fishing in the morning? Oi, where are you from? We live in an island. When fishermen go fishing? In the night? Or is only I from south? When down he carcass the other day, you know, see fishing boat and fishermen and things. That's where I get the picture with the fishing boats. Ah! I went in the day mankind finished fishing when morning come. Okay? Here come Jesus now. Telling you to do things that seem to you to make no sense whatsoever. But he says, I am the Lord. I am he. And I am sensitive to your situation. And when I get involved, oh, it is awesome and mighty. Church, get ready because you will be astonished. It will be awesome and mighty. When God gets in the middle of it, Jesus sit down in the boat and he call out to Simon. You think Jesus, I know he do it. Jesus says, Simon, put out in the water and let down your net for a catch. Here, Simon, master, plenty of respect. Enough respect to the master. Plenty of respect. I don't want to offend you, eh, master, but here what really going on, eh? You really know. I understand. Your hands soft. You ain't know about fishing and things. Your hand grease with olive oil. Mm -hmm. He said, Master, we work hard all night. You ain't know about that hard work. You ain't know what work we do inside of it. We work hard all night and we have not caught anything. We have done all what fishermen know to do and we have caught nothing. This morning, you pray all how you know to pray and it's strong like if God ain't answering. 
We can listen to you. You, you, you. you pray all how you know to pray as experienced prayers. And God is saying nothing. You try everything in that business. Then in the middle of a pestilence, we live in victorious. And you ain't getting the results. Oh, Jesus. You do everything in the business prescription for the business. And you ain't seeing nothing. You went by every doctor and every specialist what it have. And they're still talking craziness. Like these doctors say, hey, no sense. They still want you to do tests. Huh? Jesus, master. <clears throat> master. We have done it all, you know. But we may see anything. <laughs> I still suffering. I in pain, my back, my foot, my head, my neck. The business in a mess, you know, I only hope I have to close because of this pestilence. I do everything. <laughs> we, we do everything and it doesn't look like it brings forth much. But because you say so. But because you say so, Jesus, I will obey. But because you say so, I will let down these nets. It will be history created where this big fisherman, Peter, big fisherman like me, going out to sea in the morning. I in the sea in the day. Other fishermen will say, now something going on with here, you know. I expected more of him. Yeah, me to, you know, to be going out there fishing in the morning. It's a sign that it's not all well. He not 100%, you know. All the, all the bulbs and them in the chandelier, not all. I will obey. How we doing it a little different, but I will obey. I will listen to God even though it don't look like it making sense to the majority. He, <laughs> because he said, I am the Lord, I am he. And he is awesome to give us the victory in the name of Jesus. Because you say, so I will let down the net. We go into fish in the morning. And when they had done so, let me tell you, it's something to obey God, you know. And make sure you get your instructions correct, you know. He said when he had done so, they caught a large number of fish. Such a large number of fish, the net start to break. Let me tell you, there be an awesome abundance. There is so awesome what God is going to do with you. The measure of healing that come into you, the doctor's going to use you for a report. This is going down in medical science concerning you. Because what healing coming will astonish. It beyond understanding what God is doing. Fisherman going out fishing in the morning. And the net breaking with the load of fish. Is Jesus doing this? He says, I am the Lord. I am he. I am awesome. I am mighty. To accomplish this. It said they caught such a large number of fish, the net start to break. They signal to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Listen, the walls will break. The, the people, it will have too much for you to know what to do with. Jesus. <laughs> they signal their partners to the next boat, come help us. Look at fish. And they came on full boat, boat so full, they start to go down with the weight. This is a Jesus who saw two boats and fishermen washing net. And he sensitive to that situation. Whatever situation this morning, Jesus is sensitive to give you awesome abundance. It will astonish he is there to, to rescue you. 
He is there to restore you. He is there to respond to you. He is there to reside with you. He is there to reshape you. He make you a fisherman that's fish in the morning. That never happened before in the history of fishing. Even the fish know when morning come to go. But you going out there to cast net in daylight? We cast in net in the deep in the daylight. Because God says so. All we doing is obeying Jesus and get the word right and obey. Because the blessing is astonishment. It's abundance. Or well, listen right to the directions. You know, I have instructions. I give an assignment to some students. I say we're doing chain verse poetry and you're writing. The theme of the poem is rain and flood. Before the class finish, I often check randomly. So what's the assignment? Let me hear you. What's the assignment? Child up here say rain and flood. The child over so who wasn't paying attention say rain and sun. The child in the middle who have dreaming say rainy season. Jesus, all you hear me? The assignment given was to write about rain and flood. But who paying attention get that? Who not paying attention here? Rain and sun. Who have dreaming in the middle of the thing uh, say rainy season? They're playing with phonetics. It sounds so. Uh -huh. Rain and flood, rain and sun, rainy season, all that thing sound like the same. Three different themes. Make sure when you hear God say <laughs> one thing, is that what you hear? Because you might be going and doing the wrong. You, you want a different assignment. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> the Lord say rain and flood. But you hear rain and sun. You hear rainy season. I stopped right there. I didn't ask for any more offerings of incorrectness. I said, I'm starting over. Let me give the assignment afresh. Everybody paying attention? What's the homework? Rain and flood. Repeat after me. Three, four. Maybe Jesus had to do with that. Where's the assignment? Repeat after me. Make sure you get that. Master, he said, put out into the deep water and let down your net for a catch. He said, Master, I hear that. I just want to say, we're working hard here, you know, and we ain't catch nothing. We're praying hard about this, and we ain't seen no breakthrough. But the Lord say, he say, if you say so, I will obey. Church, obey. And when you do, it's such a large number of fish, the net began to break. They signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help. And they came and filled both boats so full, it began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell down. Listen, you just have to worship God. He fell down at his knees. He said, God, I ain't here with this. You, this I frighten. I, I ain't worthy of all of this miracle. Oh, Lord Jesus. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish. They had deep. This morning, church, you're going to be astonished. The world is going to be astonished with you when Jesus finished. And let me tell you, he ain't finished. He said they were astonished. So were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. I will make you fishers of men. So they pulled up their boats on the shore and they left everything and they followed him. Whenever there is a need, Jesus knows how. To respond. My God, I tell you, there is no one like the God of Jeshurun. Deuteronomy 33, 26 and 27. There's no God like the God of Jeshurun who rides across the heavens to help you. And on the clouds is his majesty. The, the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Jesus had a miraculous outpouring and we're closing now. Now, in Matthew, it's in Matthew 14 and Matthew 15. Where again, Jesus just looked and was sensitive to the need. It says, when Jesus left and he went along the Sea of Galilee, Matthew 15, 
29 to 38. He got on the mountain and he sat down. Great crowds followed him. They bring the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, others laid them at his feet and Jesus healed all of them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute. I tell you, it's amazement, it's astonishment. The crippled well, the lame walking, the blind seen, and they praise the God of Israel. Jesus said to his disciples, I have compassion for these people. Jesus is sensitive. Jesus just look. And he says, see all these people? I see their need. They're tired and they're hungry. And I will feed them. The disciples say, where are you getting food to feed these people? Where are you getting bread? We're in a remote place. They have no puff and stuff. They have no quailers delivery. They have no bakery. They have no chimuk. They have no lenders. This is not massy stores. They have nothing around here to feed humans. We in a remote place. Jesus, look around. Boy, this Jesus is a strange one, you know. He telling me to feed the people. Wait, what? Listen, I tell you, if you was a disciple in them days, you have plenty drama to deal with. God, Jesus said, you feed the people. Thousands of people sit down all over the place. Big people, small people, skinny people, fat people, man people, woman people, all kind of people. Feed the people with what? In this remote place. Yeah, nothing. Jesus, they're calm. He always calm. His hand grease with olive oil. He, he calm. He never bake a bread. That's what they're thinking. You never bake a bread. You don't know about a loaf. You don't know hops, bread, sliced bread, no bread. You ain't do nothing but bread. And we feed people with bread. We keep in quiet. Yes, Lord. Stop me when I say something wrong. He said, where we getting bread to feed these people? And even if we could find the bread, it'd take a half of a year wages to buy it. Jesus said, what you have? He got a sweat he can say that 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 he can say what you have how much loaves you have <laughs> oh Jesus just some little loaf and some little fish and he tell them sit down and he break it and he give thanks. And he said to the disciples, feed my people. They all ate. They all, all satisfied. And then they pick up basket upon basket of broken leftovers. Five thousand, four thousand people fed. Why? Because God is sensitive to your need. And he is going to work amazing miracles to make sure that you have victory and that you have a rescue, restoration, reshaping, healing. So I close by saying, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, praise be to God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. In Jesus' name, even in your old age and gray years, I am he, says the Lord. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you. I will carry you. I will sustain you. I will rescue you. I will give you awesome victory. I will make what concerns you astonishing. For I am the Lord who has care and compassion, sensitive to your situation. Oh, Lord God, we give you praise and thanks this morning for your word. We pray, Lord God, that you uh, be, become that miraculous, astonishing, working God in our situation. Because we know you are sensitive to bless us, to give us the victory, Lord God. God, we present ourselves to you to do what you guide us to, to go where you lead us to. Lord God, we thank you for you are awesome God in Jesus' name. And the people say, Amen.
sorry. Mighty is of King. I hear the sound of rain. This is the rain of the Holy Ghost. Jesus may say to you that you should do something that is unconventional. Mm -hmm. You have the courage to go fishing in the morning with all the fishermen watching you and saying, madness. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do something like that, you know? And so this week, what I want you to do is to sit quietly and listen to the Lord and say, Lord, what am I missing? And you say, but if I say that to the Lord, is he going to answer me? If you wish to hear him, he will answer you. The only reason he will not answer you is if you are asking him out of curiosity. God does not respond to curiosity. But he will answer you if he sees you're going to obey him. So whatever he tells you to do, he will answer your question if he sees that you're going to obey him. You see? When Jesus said to Peter, do the unconventional thing. Do the thing that looks really, you know, like if, as our, our minister said, all the bulbs in the chandelier are not lighted. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Well, I want to tell you that Pastor Sam and I have done that many times. And since he's left, I've done it many times. Maybe you've never had the courage to do that. But that's what you need to do. When you ask Jesus, what is your direction for me? As long as he sees you're going to obey him, he will give you an answer. When he gives you that answer, honor him by obeying him honor him by obeying him and don't be afraid once he gives you the instruction even if it sounds totally crazy do it it will turn out all right it may not start out too good people might say hee, hee, hee. but it will finish well and you know it's important to finish well it's important to finish well anybody could start but not everybody can finish hallelujah let's stand lift your hands to the lord father we lift empty hands before you all that we have tried we have tried we have done all the things that are conventional and now our hands are empty we lift empty hands before you because you will fill our hands with your direction. And so today we receive your direction for going forward. We receive your direction for going forward. We thank you that you are interested in taking us forward in your path of righteousness for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pursue your way of righteousness for us and Lord even if it means that we get laughed at and people say everything all the bulbs aren't lighting in the chandelier that's okay Lord we intend to obey you and so we thank you Lord we thank you that nothing that anyone says that is negative can affect us when we walk in your path of righteousness for us and so we bless you and we praise you and we thank you for putting in our hand the direction that we have asked you for and we intend to obey you and we are in and we are 
available to be astonished and amazed and, and know in our own experience how wonderful you are. And so we thank you, Lord. You are wonderful. You are our counselor. You are our mighty God. You are our everlasting Father. And you are our Prince of Peace. And we thank you that when we fit in with all the directions that you have given us, this is the result. And we receive your results for having obeyed your direction. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us to adventure with you. And Lord, when we adventure with you, our lives are never boring. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of walking with you and adventuring with you and never knowing what's around the next corner, but knowing that you have us. You have us in front, you have us in the back, you have us on the left, you have us on the right, you have us above, you have us below. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we receive your direction today and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated for two minutes. I have one or two announcements and I hope I remember all the announcements I should give. Um, I have to apologize to our sister Judy for not remembering to let you know that the food ministry is always open. Every week we're open for donations. So you can bring your donation anytime after 10 on a Tuesday and anytime after, between 10 and midday on a Thursday. Anytime. Especially now it's Christmas and some people are having a rough time and they would appreciate some help from you. Please don't bring money. We, we don't have time to go and shop in the grocery. What we need is food stuff. So when you go to the grocery, remember somebody and bring stuff that's unperishable, not perishable. Anything like that, just bring it. We would be very delighted to have it. Secondly, on the 20th of December, that's a Sunday sometime before Christmas, the Sunday before Christmas, the Daughters of Zion will be putting on a drama right here called The King is Coming. And um, it sounds to me to be a very exciting matter. And you know, once we lift up Jesus, who is the King who is coming, he's going to show up and he's going to bless us. So either you're going to watch on uh, YouTube or you can come and um, be with us here the 20th of December, the King is coming. Now, on that Sunday only, we will start church at 9 o'clock. On that Sunday only, it is at 9. And it's at 9 so that uh, the people taking part in the drama don't have to come here at half past 5 to start preparing. So we're going to give them an extra hour, and we are going to come at 9 so that we will be blessed. And... Um, well, we'll see what it's about, but it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. So either come in person or watch on YouTube, nine o'clock on the 20th of December. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, we also having our Olias Night service um, on, I can't remember what day of the week Olias Night is. Anybody remember? Don't remember, but anyway, whatever night Olias Night is, we have in service at 7 p.m. so that everybody will be home by a good hour to spend midnight with their family. So, 7 o'clock on Olia's night and 9 o'clock on the 20th of December, 9 a.m. on the 20th of December. And I hope everybody heard all <laughs> those things. <laughs> so, I think those are my two announcements. Or was that three? Whatever. I hope I didn't forget anything else. So, we're going to stand and Brother Sherwin is going to come and dismiss us as he usually does. And we are going to have a great week in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Hallelujah. 
At this time, we'll ask the ushers as we take out the morning stars and offerings, so you may have your seat for two minutes. Hallelujah. So take my heart. you have done this morning. We ask for oh God that you help us to use these funds for the furtherance of the kingdom, that your name may be established upon the earth. And so Lord, we just thank you for everything that you have done this morning. We thank you, God, if it was not by might, nor by power, but by your Holy Spirit. And so we give you all the praise and thanks and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand.
Oh, Lord. 